Quit sitting around when you can go outside. Let's go for a wonder, yeah, you feel alive. With Buddy Chris and Lila, you can love things too. Hello and welcome to Let's Wander. I'm your host Chris Day and in today's episode we're going to Bognor Regis. We're going to be looking at the history of the town and places of interest and there are quite a few because I'll tell you what, Bognor is more than just chips on the pier and a melting ice cream. So with all this being said, let's wander. Located on the southwest coast of England, Bognor Regis forms part of the Jurassic coastline. Fossilised tree stumps form what is known as the Bognor Rocks and it's easy to find many other fossils at low tide. Founded around 680 AD, the name Bognor comes from the Saxon name Bucgonora, meaning Bukgas, a female Saxon name, shore or landing place. It was mainly a fishing village until the 18th century. In the summer of 1784, a London hat maker named Sir Richard Hoffman retired and moved to Bognor. He built Bognor Lodge, now known as Hoffman Park House. Hoffman purchased some 1,600 acres of land and began building terrace houses with the intention to attract more visitors and create a resort from a once quiet fishing village. Sir Richard died on March 14, 1799. His grave is at St Mary Magdalene Church in South Burstead. The White Tower, built in 1898 by architect John Cyril Hawes, was a seaside house for himself and his brothers so they had a sea view. Dante Gabriel Rossetti was a founder of the pre-Raphaelite movement. When he arrived in Bognor he wasn't in good stead, addicted to chloral and following an awkward relationship with Jane and William Morris. Years before this his wife Elizabeth Siddell had died of an overdose of laudanum. He buried his poetry book with her. He later had her exhumed in order to retrieve his lost work. The author James Joyce wrote the comedy Finnegan's Wake in Bognor. Best known for Ulysses, a rather saucy book, The Fifty Shades of Grey at that time. Bognor played a big role in World War II. There are a few plaques and memorials throughout the town. This one is to Lieutenant Walter Erskine, who died defusing a mine on the foreshore. The pier was taken over by the military and renamed HMS St Barbara. A break of a small bridge was made in the pier to make it harder for invaders to use it as a landing platform. The beach between Bognor and Zelzy was where the military had submerged a Mulberry Harbour ready for the Allied invasion of D-Day. Made up of caissons, one broke loose in a storm on the 4th of June 1944. It then washed ashore the day after D-Day. Another part resides in the sea by Pagham and was used by the RAF for bombing practice. To this day, unexploded ordnance is often uncovered at nearby Medmary Beach after rough seas. In the 1930s, Billy Butlin arrived in Bognor. 
In 1933, he opened up a recreation shelter with one-armed bandits and dodgems. After his successful camp in Skegness, he opened up a site in Bognor. The shelter was situated here, on the corner of Lennox Street. Butlin also opened a small zoo by the seafront in 1933. It's hard to imagine brown, black and polar bears in Bognor, yet they were. The film, The Punch and Judy Man, starring Tony Hancock, was also shot in Bognor. He stayed here at the Royal Norfolk Hotel. Also filmed in Bognor was the Steptoe and Son episode, The Holiday. In more recent times, the TV comedy Don't Forget the Driver was shot in various locations around the town. And there's still more to know! Even Charlie Chaplin made an early appearance at the Esplanade Theatre before he went off to America. It said that he was a bit of a flop. On the 13th of August 1994, two bombs were planted in bags placed on bicycles in Bognor and in Brighton. The Bognor one was on a bicycle outside Woolworths and detonated at 5.57pm. Nobody was hurt and the Brighton one was diffused. Bognor Picture Drome was originally named the Queen's Hall until it became a full-time picture drome on July the 5th, 1918. The opening night feature was Cecil Hepworth's Boundary House starring Alma Taylor. It's one of a handful of cinemas of its kind that still have the original decor and you can see a latest release for under £4. Okay, that takes us to the end of our video about the history of Bogner. I hope you liked it. I hope you'll like, share, subscribe, and please do leave a comment and tell your friends about the channel. <laughs> From me and the rather excited little buddy, because I've got treats in my hand. <laughs> Lila, you're going to say goodbye? And from Lila, this was Let's Wonder, and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye bye. Ha, 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 ha.